Well, howdy, howdy. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me make sure. Nope, I'm not muted. Hello. I am finishing getting things together for our project tonight, which is going to involve embroidery. Um, so I hope you guys are excited about doing embroidery. And I appreciate you joining us tonight. I'm a little bit late trying to finish getting everything together. So, however, I appreciate you being here. We got a lot to go over. I wasn't here last week. I understand there are some babies that were uh, looking forward to having the bell ring last week, which I don't even have the bell in front of me right now. <laughs> so that just goes to show what kind of day it's been for um, or what kind of evening it's been rather this last little bit. So at any rate, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Eve with the Baby's Booty. And what we're going to do tonight is um, do a in the hoop project. Okay, so we're going to do an in the hoop pouch. But what we're going to encompass is somewhat pro. And we're going to edit the original design by adding our own monogram to the front of the design. Um, and it's a really cute, cute monogram design that we got from Designs by Little B. And I'll add all of that in the description as we go along throughout our show this evening. So I missed you guys. I hate um, that I wasn't here, but I did take literally the two weeks to myself somewhat um, and enjoyed doing some uh, downtime with my kids or who are not children. They're many adults technically. Uh, but spent time with them and enjoyed um, some me time pretty much and had a good time. So I did miss you all. However, um, it was much needed break. It was a much needed break. So at any rate, <laughs> we here uh, at the Baby's Booty want to welcome everyone to our hoop group, which because this channel originally encompassed embroidery, but now we've expanded. We also enjoy um, rhinestones, sublimation, some vinyl, uh, and again, embroidery. So if you're into any of those uh, crafts, then you're here at the right place. We like to teach all of it. So if you have any questions on any of those topics, just feel free to drop them in the chat below and we'll get to your question as soon as possible. However, tonight we are going to focus on embroidery because we got a new baby in the house and I want to show that off and let you guys see what we got going on and uh, show you how a home machine you can use to make money. Okay, so a lot of the folks here uh, are interested in starting their own business. They would like to get into using sublimation, rhinestones, embroidery, and the whole nine to try and make a little bit of extra money. So even if it's not a full-fledged you know, making business, you know, every day, beating the books and, you know, full designer line type situation. But every so often, a little bit of, you know, pocket change is not uh, a bad thing. So especially when you're doing something that you absolutely enjoy doing and can get paid for it, that is a plus. All right. That's a huge plus. So one of the things I do in the beginning of our shows is like to say hi to everyone who has joined us because without you guys joining us, we wouldn't have 40,000 subscribers right now. That's crazy. That's something else that happened while I was gone. <laughs> Woke up earlier this week, rolled over, checked YouTube comments and saw there was 40K folks in this house. Okay, so yes, you guys are rock stars. You support this channel, so there is no way I'm going to come in here and definitely not say hi to all the beautiful people who have taken the time to join us. So uh, I also need to grab my bell now that I think about it because I don't want to not ring a bell because I see uh, someone already needs to have the bell ring, including we need the bell ring ourselves. So I'm going to grab that here in a little bit. But only one Staley, I want to say hi to you, Gail Moore. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Monica Torres, C. Cynthia, hello, how are y'all? So Crafty and Tanya you are both YouTube Who Group members and I definitely appreciate the both of you for joining us this evening. What's up, Tanya? you? And hello, so Crafty. Treasure Designs, hello, how are you? T. Moore, hello, welcome, and thank you so much for being a YouTube Who Group member. 
Rev JJH Holly Dooley. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Lori Campbell, always a pleasure. Welcome. Nikomi Butler, Deborah Harris, welcome. Inspiration Creations, Lori from Canada. Hello, how are you as well? Mary Brown, good evening to you, Ms. Lady D. Tiana, hello. Simone Warren, thank you so much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We definitely appreciate your support of our channel. Carmen Alvarado says, hello, even Hoop Group, so happy you're back. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a welcome break. And thank you, Carmen, for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, Kathy Barker, yes, you did catch us this evening. Kingsbury Crafts, hello, the other Gale. <laughs> welcome. Thank you for joining us. Walk by faith. Good evening. Debbie D. Hey, Debbie D. How are you? Welcome. And thank you for joining us. And thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Miss Ethel Smith as well. Thank you so much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Byron F. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Jeanette Davis. Thank you so much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, Tiana says, need family and break time. Yes, yes, we definitely do. Suzanne R says, howdy from College Station, Texas. Welcome. <laughs> Glad to be back. Embroidery Deep, uh, hey, dear Harmony Ling. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Miss 143 says, hi, even all. I got a new baby, a salt grass 500 sublimation printer. So we are going to have to grab the bell here shortly. And I will ring that for you. But until then, I wrote it down. So I don't forget. Shirley Dabney, hello. How are you? Welcome. Uh-oh, my chat unscrolled the kingdom come. Okay, here we go. Uh, Walk by Faith says you saw the new baby. Yeah, so if you are in the Facebook group, if you're in the Facebook group, then you definitely saw um, that I did post the new machine in the Facebook group. It is Faith, and she is here with us, and she's going to, put in some work for the first time today with you guys. So hopefully you all look forward to that as I look forward to working with her. Miss 143 says, congratulations. Thank you. We got to ring the bell on that too. <laughs> We're shooting for a pretty big 50K. All right. So when we get to 50K, we'll have something cool because we've done milestones before. So we definitely are going to have to do a milestone when we hit 50K, right? So if you guys have some ideas, shoot them to me in the comments, or you can even drop me an email um, and I will take all of it into consideration and put us together a humdinger of a show. <laughs> uh, Simone Warren got her brother SE600 in the mail. Yas, that's what's up. How awesome is that? Because you will get to watch us um, and enjoy this same project um, on your machine because the project that we're doing tonight is definitely four by four friendly. Although tonight we're going to do it on the five by seven. I had considered bringing out the four by four machine and running both of them at the same time. And then something in my brain was like, you know, that's a whole hot food mess, a whole another machine for something to go wrong. <laughs> Cause y'all know we had the craziest stuff go wrong on the show. So I was like, eh, let me cut cut things down and make it a little bit simpler. So we're just going to run one machine tonight. Um, let us see. Hey, Sheila Cushenberry. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Robin, hello. How are you? Welcome. So to we begin embroidery. Good evening to you as well. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Lil Nelson and Ray Williams, thank you to the both of you very, very much for being YouTube Hoop Group members as well and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Teresa Jackson, hello to you as well. Treasure Designs got a new baby. <laughs> My new baby. I love your new baby. That is hilarious. My new baby is a 16 by 10 craft house that my husband had built for me in our backyard. I know that's right, girl. That is awesome sauce. It is always cool to have a uh, she she or she shed <laughs> out there in the backyard where you can do all of your crafts as you want to. So I'm excited for that. And I am writing this down so that I don't forget that either. Because we're going to definitely ring the bell. Allison Holloway says, hi, Eve. Missed you. I'm the one who got the brother PR 1055. You're intimidated. Don't be intimidated, Allison. 
Don't be intimidated. We can't do that. It is an awesome machine. Ten needles. You can't be intimidated by ten needles. <laughs> Those ten needles will serve you well. So don't worry about it. We've got lots of projects. As a matter of fact, the project tonight is a little bit complicated only because there involves flipping and all of that stuff because we're doing a pouch. This is a zipper pouch and there's no exposed seams on the inside. So there's a lot that you have to um, do to it. But once you get in the routine of making these, they're very simple to do. Right. So you would find that this would be a really awesome little project to do as your first project on your machine, if you would like to, because <laughs> we're going to walk step by step on this thing. Andrea loves stitches. Stitches. Sorry. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. <laughs> Nick Nick Nurse is here. Hello. How are you? Mary, how are you? I don't want to mispronounce your last name. You would make a wonderful Brother Stowe's ambassador. You have so much knowledge. Um, well, I do enjoy their equipment, especially, especially their single needle machines. Out of all of the equipment that's out there, the single needle home machines are so affordable. They're very affordable, even though COVID drove up prices, unfortunately, on a lot of levels. Um, and a lot of them sold out once COVID hit because everybody was at home and trying to find something to do. Um, but the machines are awesome machines. They're workhorses and I absolutely love them. So yes, we definitely do enjoy the brother. And now this one is the 770. I also have the SE4. I had the 400 and the 425 and the PE 500, but, um, the PE 500, I sold it. Um, and I can't, let's see, I think I sold the PE 400 or gave it away one. And then we have the SE 425 left. It's either the 400 or the 425. Can't remember which one, but yes, we love those single needle machines for sure. Scooby-Doo. Hello, Scooby-Doo. My love, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Scooby-Doo is awesome sauce. She's a moderator on our Facebook group as well as here on YouTube. So we definitely appreciate her help because there are days where my hair is like all over the place. And I can't think, and she comes to the rescue, and I really appreciate it. Gail Moore, thank you so much for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I think I might have said hi earlier, but I'm not sure it's okay to say hey again. Olivia Garcia, hello. I look, oh, I hope I look, <laughs> I hope I look rested. I don't know, because I was up late last night, but you know how that goes. Heather Butler, hello, welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Embroidery Diva, thank you. I appreciate the congratulations. So too, we begin embroidery. Got a new baby. She switched out her Sawgrass 500 for the Sawgrass 1000. So you you know what, y'all? I can't keep doing this. I cannot keep doing this. This is just not even going to work. Let me go get my bell because I'm tired of saying congratulations. And, and in my mind, I'm hearing the bell ring. But I ain't got no bell to ring for y'all. And that's just not going to work. That's why y'all even telling me about it because we want to get the bell to ring. So let's grab our bell. It's right here. It's just that I forgot to grab it. Now, what kind of sense is that? Did you forget to grab the bell? That's the main star of the show. It's our bell. <laughs> so let me go back down this list because I'll be darned if we not going to ring this bell because we going to ring the bell. Oh, and we got a new member. Let's see who our new member of our hoop group is. Andrea Love Stitches. Welcome to the hoop group. Yes, <laughs> y'all. And then it's crazy because I made um, GIFs gifts. So I don't know how you pronounce it, y'all. I'm old school, so I don't be knowing this new fango stuff. But made a gift ringing the bell, and I just absolutely love that thing. Uh, let me go back up. So I have Miss One Forty Three. She was the first one that she got a new baby. She got the new Sawgrass Sublimation Printer. Woo! <laughs> we're going to ring this bell today, y'all. We're going to wear this thing out. And then we had Simone Warren. She got the SE600. Mail to her. Y'all, congratulations. <laughs> so if you got a bell, I hope you're ringing it with me. And then we have Treasure Designs. Treasure Designs. Let me see. You got the 6x10 Craft House, the Shishier 
She said, <laughs> Four walls and a roof, girl. Four walls and a roof. <laughs> we like the four walls and a roof. Oh, and the door. We can't leave that out. <laughs> Some folks even get the windows. Did you get windows? Let's hope so, so you can see the birds while you're in there working. And then Allison Holloway, you got your 10 needle, right? Hold on, I'm getting back down to where you are. Let's see, hold on. Oh, there you are, PR 1055. Hey! <laughs> 10 needles, girl. Congratulations on them 10 needles. We gonna work them things out. Yas, the only time them 10 needles is a pain when you got to change them joints and them needles is just like, oh, I got to change all of them. Yeah, you got to change all of them. <laughs> Sometimes it, it's like that, especially when you have a large project that encompasses all of the needles. It's good to keep them changed because it'll cause problems. Let's see. And then we also had So To We Begin Embroidery with the sawgrass that's been switched out to the sawgrass tent. Uh, sorry. Not 10 hundred, 1,000. Ooh, child, I was trying to put you on a whole different plane with a machine that don't even exist. Ain't that a trip? <laughs> Congra <laughs> Congratulations on your updated progress. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. And she got it switched out. She said she going to do bigger and better sublimation things. Now, I'm hoping we can get back in the sublimation next week. If we don't do next week, then it'll definitely be the week after. But sublimation is like, I love sublimation. And we got a really cool um, job here uh, for my business with the sublimation. Uh, a local cheer team, they want custom hair bonnets. You know, the ones that you wear when you sleep or when you got your hair in curl or stuff like that. Where well, we're going to sublimate the fabric, right? And put the team logo on it. And then I'm going to ship the fabric off to the lady that's going to make them for them. So I'm really excited about that and how that's going to turn out. But y'all, I could have sewn the bonnets. I ain't time to sew no bonnets. Oh my God. I mean, I probably could have made time to sew the bonnets, but I ain't trying for no bonnets. So we're going to farm that work out, but we will sublimate the fabric ahead of time. So I'm super excited about that because um, satin usually is polyester. So that's going to turn out super, super, super cute. Um, Beverly Dudley, hello, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Elizabeth Rathburn says, hello, listening on my Bluetooth as I drive home, hoping that I make it home before Faith comes out before her de debut. We're going we gonna to stall as much as possible, but I definitely need to get into it because it's a whole project, y'all. Like I said, this will be her very first time embroidering for us here. I haven't even embroidered anything on it yet. So this will be exciting. She'll get to show off her skills right here on our channel for y'all. It's so awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Miss Me Creatively by Kim. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay. Not so far. Then we have Beautiful Soul. Love that. Ooh, Beautiful Soul. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, G. Murray from Omaha. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, Galena White. Hey, Galena. Didn't catch the live very often, so just want to say you're awesome. Well, thank you, Galena, for joining us live. She's in the Hoop Group as well on uh, Facebook. So definitely you guys pop over to Facebook. If you haven't already, we are welcoming you in with open arms. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Simone Langley, good evening to you as well. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. PJ Coppage in the house, always a pleasure. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Pearl Lucas, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming in. Galena got a heat press and a silhouette. Well, congratulations on your heat press and your silhouette. <laughs> yes, congratulations. A lot of fun. We like to do some heat pressing and some cutting around here. Kristen Smith got her embroidery machine. What'd you get? Kristen, let us know so that we can ring the bell for your baby so we'll know which one you got and celebrate properly. Lita Nelson said, I pull out my, my PE 525 today and put it beside my MB4. 
I've never tried to use it, but got a 47 mask order to do this week. So I need to have all three machines going, maybe asking for help using it. And that's for certain. That's the cool thing. The smaller machines, a lot of folks uh, tend to knock them and it's really not necessary to do because those small machines really pack a punch. I'm trying to tell you a lot of folks out here, like I want the multi-needle. I want, you know, bigger equipment. I want, I want, I want. And that's all well and good, but you have to utilize your resources for what you have, right? So if you don't have the credit or if you don't have the budget to go out and purchase a new machine or finance a new machine, which I would strongly discourage financing unless you're talking about a multi-needle machine, which is up in the tens of thousands, I can understand that. Or even the red line is 6,000, uh, 7,000 roughly is not a small bit of pocket change it's not and i get that so when you have a smaller budget like i did in the very beginning i mean heck now i think about it my budget's still small but anyway we digress you can take that same power that same drive and you can put it into a four by four machine and possibly a second four by four machine right because two four by four machines is still two heads working for you you can still make two things at the same time so don't knock the little power of the little four by four machine please don't because that's what i did i ended up having three going at one time and that was making money for me so don't think that you can't do it you can even with a limited budget okay so let the little ones work for you linda owens thank you so much for joining our hoop group and we appreciate you coming aboard Yes, congratulations. <laughs> and I see somebody blaming me for something. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's go back up and let's see, let's see, let's see. You got your, that only one Staley. What's all these month icons? The month icons just show how long a person has been a member of the hoop group. That's all it does. Uh, but it's a, um, uh, status symbol, so to speak, uh, I like to call it because I wanted um, each member to sh to know that I appreciate how long they've been a member of the Hoop Group. So even if it's been a month or three months or six months, you deserve a badge to show how long you've been supporting our channel. And that badge shows everyone else how much I appreciate it because I could not even put that on there and not even acknowledge how long a person has been supporting this channel. But I chose to do so. Um, and I definitely appreciate each and every one for however long they've been here, even if it's only been a couple of days or in the instance of our two members tonight, a couple of minutes. I don't mind. I really <laughs> appreciate it. They help us get these toys going and the supplies to go with them. So I definitely uh, want to show my gratitude. Beautiful Soul says she got a new heat press and a silhouette cameo for Lord. Y'all to me silhouette color. <laughs> Congratulations, yes! She's gonna be heat pressing all kind of stuff. So the heat press and the cameo, you can do vinyl shirts, you can do rhinestones. It's a lot of stuff you can do with just those two options, right? So that's a good thing. Sonia Siegler, hello. Karen Murray, Nedra, Donald, and Barbara Covington, welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being here this evening, Dana. Pendarvis, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate it. Uh, Kingsbury Crass says, ring, ring, ring. <laughs> I know that's right. Kimberly, best day ever shop. Hello, I love it. Best day ever, yas. <laughs> she says, your videos have really helped. Thank you, you're welcome. We're out here to make sure folks don't get stressed out like I did in the beginning. Kristen Smith says, she got a brother 1600 E, yas. Woo! <laughs> Oh man, this is awesome. I hope we get to get to our project tonight because we got so many babies and we just ringing this bell. Cause look, even Barbara Covington, she's new and just got the biking to pass 40. Woo! Yes! Biking to pass in the house. <laughs> and then Melody told me she bought a 12 by 12 easy press last night and it's all my fault. It's okay, girl. I'm gonna ring the bell for you anyways. Woo! 
<laughs> my fault. My bad. <laughs> it's all right, though. That 12 by 12 is an excellent easy purse. It's a pretty big baby, too. So you can use that to do shirts. You can use it to do um, even vinyl on the shirts as well. So the easy press is a really good machine to use when you don't have the space or the deeper pockets for the, um, mate, the larger or the electricity bill for the larger heat press. Cause that's a lot of heat area that, uh, those bigger heat presses pull a lot of juice. So the smaller ones can be a better option in a lot of ways. Harmony Lee says, I blew up and started my little business on your small SE600. You can certainly have a business with $400 machine and make that money back in a week or two. And that's absolutely correct. The thing is, you have to find something that folks want, which a lot of people, they want that little left chest logo on the shirt. Or they want something small like a, a um, you can do beanies with the 4x4 machine. Um, you can do baby blankets with the four by onesies you can do with the four by four machine. There's a lot that you can do with that machine and yes, make that money back. Dana says I have a baby lock accent EAC, which is in the shop for repair. Oh no. And also purchased a PEA hundred that is on its way to you. Dana, honey, let us know when that PEA hundred arrives so we can ring the bell and welcome it right on into the family. <laughs> Congratulations on the order. And hopefully it gets there swiftly. S. Smith, hello, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us. Tiana says, you're right, Eve. I don't use either machines anymore. Lost drive for it. Oh no, sublimation equipment as well. Retired now since December the 7th. Well, I can understand. There's a lot of times you can get burnout. Um, and the burnout is real, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. There's been many times I was like right on the edge in the last couple of weeks where I was just like, you know what? I just, I don't know. Do I really want to keep going? You know, but I know there's so many folks who still have a lot left to learn a lot more that they want to know. There's still some really cool stuff coming out um, that we can do and get involved in. So, but it can be overwhelming. So that's where you definitely um, take time and support yourself and take a break if you need to and then come back. The thing is, keep on the lookout for some fresh and new things. Things that, you know, can kind of get you more excited about getting back into it. And that way, you can get a fresh start. You can get back on the, in the saddle and come out with that love that you had at first. It, it's still there. We just got to, you know, boost it back up. Kimberly says, can you tell me the difference between the Cricut Maker, the Silhouette 4, and the Brother Scanning Cut? Which one do you prefer? Um, I have, uh, well, I don't have the Cricut Maker. I have the Cricut Air 2, but I also have the Silhouette 4, and I also have the Brother Scanning Cut. There, as far as mechanics is concerned, there really is no difference. A cutter is a cutter. Um, there's even, uh, on Amazon, things from uh, cutters from the company U.S. Cutter Plotters, which is a cutting machine, except they're much bigger. There's also, um, it's um, U.S. Cutter Graph Tech. There's also Graph Tech Cutters. All of these, all they do is cut things, right? And the difference between all of them generally boils down to the software user interface and the types of materials that can be cut. Now those larger um, cutting machines, like the larger plotters, like Graph Tech and um, US Cutter and so on, uh, so on and so forth, those usually cut vinyl material, like paper, vinyl, thin vinyl, signed vinyl, stuff like that. Um, but the Cricut Maker and also the, I'm pretty sure, this, yeah, the Silhouette 4 has the rolly blade. So those machines have adapters that allow them to cut thicker materials like little birch wood, the thin birch wood, um, thicker leathers. Um, and they also have the adapters that allow you to put the pins in them and use the pin to draw as well as cut with the same head, right? So there are some differences there as far as that's concerned. But again, the largest difference between them all is... <clears throat> the interface that you use to operate the machinery, okay? So 
the uh, Scan and Cut, the Silhouette 4, and the Cricut Maker, the Cricut Air, the Cricut 1, they're all 12-inch cutting machines. They cut 12 inches. Now, the Silhouette has the Silhouette Pro and the Silhouette I can't, don't even know what the one in the middle is. They have stages where they go bigger, right? So I think the Silhouette Pro is like a 21-inch cutting head. I'll have to uh, double check and see, but it's a very big cutting machine. Uh, but whether or not it being that big and it still cuts the thicker materials, not sure. Okay, so that's something we'd have to look into, and I actually haven't because I have four cutting machines right now, <laughs> and I really don't want to get another one. Um, but it is good to still know what they do and how they operate, right? So as far as my favorite is concerned, I it depends. It depends. Okay, now what I love about the Brother Scan and Cut is that I can operate that machine all by itself. I don't have to have a computer. I don't have to have software. I like cutting out stickers, okay? So if I were to print stickers on the printer, I could just slide that into the machine without the machine even being connected to my laptop. And the scan and cut will actually scan the image inside the machine itself. And on the little flip screen, I can select where I want it to cut around each sticker, how wide and how far away and all that jazz. Tell it that I'm cutting stickers and it'll cut it out. I don't have to have a computer or anything with that. I love that part of it. Um, now, the interface, the program that, that you use to actually run the scan and cut, I'm not a huge fan of. It's not as user friendly to me. But I also haven't used it very long either, okay? So the Brother Canvas workspace, I, I just didn't, I'm sure they've made improvements by now. I'll just put it that way. And it's been a while, a good year, and good two years actually, since I've tried to use the Canvas workspace. And I was like, I, I just... I'm, I tend to go the path of least resistance. So the Cricut, I'm very familiar with. I've already known it. I've used it for years now. I think my first Cricut, I got it about five years ago. So I'm very familiar with design space. It's quirks and stuff like that. They've made improvements through the years. So it's like, okay, I know them. I'm using them. Silhouettes is a good machine as well. I love their software. Their software is amazing. Um, there's so much that you can do if you purchase certain levels. Like the highest level is my favorite because I can do the rhinestone feature on that one um, where you can use it to try and design your own rhinestones. Um, however, I had issues with the machine itself, trying to get it to do something that they said it could do. And when that frustrated me, I was like, oh, okay, I'll deal with you later and packed it back up in the box and it's been sitting there. So um, the software is one thing, but the equipment itself, I don't know if I just got a bad one or something. I don't know, but it, it I don't like issues. <laughs> I don't like issues. So my technically favorite would be the Cricut. Uh, equipment only because I know how to use it so very well and I don't I I know how to make it do what I want it to do so far right I also have the Cricut Joy here uh, and the Cricut Joy is a really good machine as well um, it's just more compact and it does things on a smaller scale and smaller le level but when you're doing smaller projects that's not that big of a deal so the Cricut Joy is a really cool machine too uh, so Right now, the Cricut brand, because I am I know it well inside and out, backwards and forwards, the equipment, I haven't had any, well, I had one issue with it, but for the most part, I haven't had issues any other way with the machines. So I like uh, Cricut for right now. But again, I love the Silhouette software. Their software is bomb.com. Sonia Siegler, hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Sharon says, I bought an Impress 15 by 15 heat press and finally set up the ET2720 for sublimation last week. Your videos have helped so much. I am very glad to hear that, girl. Tell us what you've been sublimating on. We want to know. Congratulations on your new baby. Woo! Yes, heat press 15, 15. Holler! Yeah, sublimation is fun, ain't it? 
Don't tell everybody. I'm trying to tell you. I'm here for sublimation all day, every day. Um, let us see. Iris DS, hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. SW says, hi, enjoy watching you. Which single machine would you recommend? Since the PEA 100 is so hard to get, I would like one that could at least take a 4x4 and a 5x7 hoop. Unfortunately, right now, that would be the PEA 800. Now, one thing I will recommend, um, but with caution, is see if somebody is getting rid of a PE 770. Those actually have withstood the test of time for a lot of people through years. So the 770 is an excellent machine, which is what we have um, going on now. Let's take a look and see if I can pull it up for you and show you, well, I don't have it zoomed in, but here's our baby right here. This is Faith. Faith is adopted. Beautiful baby. She came to, whoops, I got y'all all over the place. Let's tilt it up some. She came to live with us so that we can teach folks and show folks the wonders that is the five by seven machine. And that's what this is. So it's the 770 which is an awesome machine. The only difference between, well, not the only difference, but the major difference between the 770 and the 800 is the color screen. But I mean, I, I don't have to have a color screen in order to use the machine to do what it needs to do. So we love our 770 around here. And that is a machine that I've recommended quite often to folks. If you're looking to get uh, five by seven as well as four by four size embroidery done. Okay, so with that being the case, the um, 770, some people could be, usually most folks don't get rid of their 770s though. I know, I, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. So I would say check online, um, you know, like Facebook Marketplace, see if maybe somebody is selling one. Um, unfortunately, maybe a family member that had one passed away, I don't know. Um, that could be an option. Also, you could check into um, your local brother dealer. So go on to uh, brother.com and see if you can find a local dealer. Sometimes the dealer, which is where you go to buy the multi-needle machines, the uh, 10 needles and the 6 needles, sometimes they even have the 5x7 machines. It's just not labeled PEA 100 or PE 770. It's under a different name. Right. So but it's still a five by seven embroidery machine. So try that. OK. Um, and even there still you're going to be running about eleven hundred, maybe something like that. So um, they are out there. You just have to kind of know where to look. And also um, Joann's has the Husqvarna line. Um, a lot of their machines also have. Um, they have smaller versions that will do five by seven as well. So definitely check them out and see what you can find. It's not impossible to get a five by seven and four by four embroidery machine. The thing is, is just having to look for it. And I think sewing somebody who did they sewing machines plus somebody listed in somebody listed in the hoop group on Facebook that there was a online place that had some PEA hundreds. So Definitely check as well. You can type in PE 800 and a lot of times a store will show up with it for sale. Blanca, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, <laughs> Scooby-Doo says she need a bell ring just because she's Scooby-Doo. We're going to ring it. We're going to ring it for you. Scooby-Doo. <laughs> we like Scooby-Doo. Deborah Woods, good evening to you as well. Holler. That's what's up. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's see, Jean Gasson, new, and I have the brother SE1900 and don't have a clue, but I began stalking for a while of your videos. Thank you, Jean. Congratulations on your SE1900. Woo! That's another machine, if I'm remembering correctly. Jean, does your machine do 5x7 as well as 4x4? Because that's the combo machine. Whereas the PE 800s and the PE 770s are just strictly embroidery machines. They don't have any sewing features. But the SE of the line of brother machines is the sewing and embroidery, right? But those model numbers aren't frequently talked about. 
So you could possibly find an SE 1900 if it has the 5x7 feature. I forget what number has the 5x7 feature. Uh, but you could even look into that and find that as well as an option. Uh, Laverne Miller, hello, welcome. How are you as well? Good here. Shannon Margaret, no worries. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Tianan says, Brother Scan and Cut can't get the hang of how to use it. And it, it that's why I, I said what I said. The um the uh scan and cut interface the you the canvas workspace that's why i was trying to remember what the name of the software was the canvas workspace takes some getting used to um so there are a lot of folks who successfully use it they figured it out mastered it but it's just it's a learning curve um so once you learn it then you got a, a good machine Andrea Ross, good evening. Good evening to you as well. Welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop group member. We definitely appreciate your support of our channel. Colette Martin, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And Jane, hello to you as well. Beautiful Soul says they have the PE770, had it for years and years. I love it. I also have the Janome 500E. Those are, it's a good machine. It's a good machine and it. A lot of folks don't have issues out of it. They run it, and it's a really good workhorse. So, yes, I definitely suggest that. Beverly Smith, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And she said she got the Cricut mug press. I'm surprised more folks didn't say that mug press because that thing has been flying off the shelf. Cricut might, if Cricut was on the brink of bankruptcy, which they're not, but if they were, that thing by itself single-handedly would have dug them out of the trenches. That thing hit the market and blew slap up. So congratulations, Beverly Smith, on your masters. Woo, y'all. Holler. <laughs> and Jane says, I didn't get a new machine, but I did buy some Cricut stock, hoping that the company does well now that it's gone public. Yes, it has gone public. Them and, um, oh, Michaels? I think it's Michaels. Somebody else went public, too. Sharon says, have been testing on t-shirts for your husband and labels for bonnets and baby blankets, thinking about sublimating on canvas this week. Yas, girl. Yas, get that work in on that sublimation machine. Uh, Jennifer Harris, hello to you as well. We're going to go ahead and get things together to get started on this 5x7. Colette says, I have a brother PR650. I want to upgrade to a Melco, Redline, or a Rakoma. What we'll help you in your decision in choosing a Redline? Thanks. And hey, Janet McKinney and hey, Jean Gashin says it is 5x7. Okay, cool. So look for the SE 1900 if you're trying to find a 5x7 embroidery machine. So that's an option. Uh, so the decision to go with Melco, Redline, or Oracoma Colette, the major influence factor was price for me. Okay, the price. You're looking at Melco and Redline, the Redline 1501 uh, being $15,000, the Melco being not far behind that in price. I believe it's more like 12. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, from what I've been told, that's that's understandable, especially with Melco. Melco is top notch um, embroidery machine. And they are a commercial machine. And, well, the Melco Redline and the Rakoma is a commercial. However, the price was what got to me. And we'll go over that here in a moment. Um, but what I will do is go and check and see if they have. Okay, so let's go here and switch you guys over to here so as you see just from typing in Melco embroidery machine in the search bar Google search it pulls up ads um, sewing machines plus which is who I thought somebody said had some uh, five by seven brother machines I'm pretty sure that's the company but they have a 16 needle machine for $9,995. Uh, now, what all comes with that, I'm not sure. Definitely do your homework because from what I understand, the Melcos have to have a specific uh, computer to go with it 
along with the software and the dongle to attach um, the computer to that machine um, in order to run it, from what I understand. So you're looking at 10000 for that one. Um, basic package at Garment Printer Inc. for 10000 as well. And of course, you can definitely click on their website um, and it'll have more information on some of the things that they offer on their website. Now, whether or not prices are on here or not, I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if prices are there, but it does have information about the machine and what all comes on it and all that other jazz. Um, now, one thing I do like about the Melco brand is for every machine, you can add machines to make two machines operate as one machine so that both machines are running the exact same thing. You can connect all the machines with the one computer and make it work uh, simultaneously, which is amazing. And that's a good thing if you intend to blow your business up and allow it to blossom and grow into this monstrosity and you're okay with doing a 1000 piece order because you have three, four, five machines lined up, mail code, multi needles to, to get it done. So th those are options that you want to look at. So curious about warranty, financing and pricing, you have to talk to them. They're not going to have the prices on there. Uh, but here's, you know, what you look at with that. However, when we go to red line 1501, everything you need to know is on their website. So they have two embroidery machines available. They have a 12 needle and they have a 15 needle embroidery machine. And if you go to machines, your pricing is right here in front of you. So you know what you're getting, you know what's there. No questions, no tricks, no hidden anything. And when you're looking at a Recoma that's 15 needles and it's $15,000, and then we have the red line here for eight, I mean, it kind of makes you want to stop and think, what are you getting? What comes with it? Um, a lot of the same stuff that comes with the one machine comes with the other, double the hoops. You get your stand, you get your hat frames, your cap driver, you get two of the cap frames, you get your patch frame, you get your table, you know, a lot of the same stuff comes with both machines. So a lot of that is what makes me question what's what. And yes, you can make it more expensive by adding hatch and by adding, um, which hatch is a digitizing software, stuff like that. So yes, you can add just like with the other machine that come comes with software, but the software at to the price or is what makes up that larger price tag. Whereas here, if you didn't want to get into digitizing, then why bother about um, getting the software? And it allows you to opt out of the software to get the lesser price. That should be an option. So yes, there are different things that make up the price points and what you can do. But I appreciate the transparency here and how they, you know, just laid it all out on the table and let you make the decision from home whether or not that's the route you want to take instead of jumping through hoops, talking to somebody and having somebody harass you to sell your stuff, sell you their stuff. So um, it all depends on what you want and what you're trying to get with your embroidery machine. So um, we're going to get ready to get into our um, embroidery project because we're coming up on 10 o'clock and I'm hoping we can get it done. We should be able to. Um, but that is uh, what I like about, I saw a question, I'm sorry, okay. So that's what made me choose, it was the price tag. Um, and I'm very happy with my choice, very happy with my choice. So I don't mind telling anybody that's the way I really appreciate going. And those guys out there are so helpful, um, especially Christian who knows that machine inside and out can help walk you through some of anything. I love that red line machine. <laughs> um, Galena says I can't get the silhouette cameo four to cut all the way through the vinyl. 
Um, it depends on which vinyl. Uh, make sure your blades are installed properly all the way through. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, the silhouette braid. No, 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 no. That's the um, scan and cut uh, blade that you can crank and make it deeper or lighter. Um, but the silhouette Cameo 4 has auto blade. Um, so if the it wouldn't hurt to maybe try and get a new blade for it, the housing to make sure that the depth thing is working correctly. But it all boils down to doing test cuts. Don't go any any cutting machine. I don't care what which cutting machine it is you decide to go with. Don't just jump on the machine and start a project and use your good stuff on this machine and say, hey, cut this. Get a little teeny sample of whatever it is and try it first to get your feel for making sure that the project is going to operate efficiently and you can get your custom setting. Once you find the setting that does work, mark it or write it down so you'll know what to come back to and then you won't have that issue again usually unless of course your blade gets dull and you need a new blade. But um, it boils down to doing test cuts. Sometimes you have to um, choose a thicker option and they do have options which show the thickness of the material and see if, if picking a thicker material will help it cut through the vinyl, but do a test cut first, like a little small quarter inch square first before actually moving towards trying to cut a huge section and wasting a lot of material. Uh, Marge Campbell got the Eco Tank 15,000 and love it. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations, ma'am. <laughs> Jennifer Harris asks, how can she get a bell ring? Well, in order to get the bell ring for you, you can either join the hoop group here on YouTube, um, get a membership here, or um, if you purchase a machine and your baby arrives, let us know what you got and we'll ring the bell for you. Andrea Love Stitches says she got the mug press also. Congratulations. Simone Warren, y'all, mug press in the house. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> That's what's up, y'all. Marge Campbell says, working on making hubby a new mask tonight. He's so thin, his other masks don't fit right anymore, but he's doing okay. Otherwise, I am glad to hear he's doing well. That is marvelous, marvelous news. Uh, 12K for the Melco Harmony says, and that's, you know, so it was the price that got me started. Uh, Gail Whitaker says, finally started with Cricut Maker, so got a 12 by 10 Easy Press, did a few t-shirts, and love it. Easy press, easy press. <laughs> Those easy presses are popular. Kimberly says, well, I have to join a paying membership to use the software. I've been hearing rumors about it. What software? Um, what software do you, I mean, I don't know of any, unless you're talking about the Silhouette or the um, Cricut. Um, you don't have to pay for a membership to use either one of those. Both of them have a free option. So I don't, which software are you uh, referring to? SW says, thank you so much for all the info. You are so sweet. Forgot to mention that I just received the Cricut Joy and the Mug Press. Mug Press again, the Cricut Joy. Congratulations. Woo, yes, holla. <laughs> um, Kimberly, oh, for the Cricut machine. No, you don't have to pay to use the Cricut software at all. Um, now, they did come out with this thing saying that you can only do up to 20 designs for free, um, saved for free, import, ah, hold on, let's back that up, okay, you can only import 20 of your own designs for free per month, starting after December the 31st, I believe it was the end of this year. They got so much flack. They said, okay, you know what? We'll then we'll we'll still do what we want to do, but we're gonna give y'all a warning, a far enough ahead warning. So as long as you buy your cricket machine between now and the end of the year, you can still upload your designs like you've been doing for free. Don't worry about it. Go on and use the cricket software. But after December, when you buy a Cricut machine, you're going to have to be restricted to 20 designs uh, of your own that you purchased outside of Cricut and bring in for free. But of course, the membership is what? $11 a month, $12 a month, something like that. 
um, that you would pay per month and then you can upload as much as you want after that. But again, that's after the end of this year, after the end of this year. So from now until then, if you buy a machine or you get a Cricut machine, you can use the software for free. Okay. Um, let us see. Let's see. Shonda Coleman got the new Cricut mug press. Used it for the first time today. Holla. <laughs> and Jennifer, you say you had the baby lock destiny. Congratulations. Holla. All these new babies. All these new babies. That's what's up. Um, March Campbell says she's looking at a larger heat press mug cap plate set up. Got to get two more quilts done first. Building up to get hubby doing sublimation. Sublimation is awesome sauce. Uh, well, by faith, you're welcome. Thank you for that. Shonda Coleman, I see. Oh, we already read that. Uh, let me, I'm going backwards this time. Melco EMX 1616 needle cost around 14K. The last I checked back in February. So to be, begin embroidery. So same price, you could get two red line machines. Just saying. Um... You get much more from Redline than Recoma for less money. Recoma also does not have the resale value. My choice is Redline still saving for it. I didn't think about the resale value. I did not think about that. That is an excellent point, Linda Owen. Never thought about that. That that that's an excellent point. Um, let's see. So uh, Nick Nick Nurse, hello, Christian, also so helpful. Yes, definitely, definitely. Elizabeth, yes, you did. I'm glad you made it home safely. Um, mm, 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 mm. How do I get my colors to print the same colors when I print? Um, How do you get your pricing is not always the same. Harmony Ling says you can, some, you can negotiate pricing. That is true. You can um Myra so getting your colors to print the same colors when you print it boils down to knowing what your printer is printing with the settings that you have okay so trying to think of the best way to explain this so say for instance um you can get Crayola, a box of Crayola crayons, right? And then you can get a box of Rose Art crayons. They're still, they're both crayons. They're both the same thing. A lot of them have the same colors. They have red, blue, green, pink, uh, off white, brown, yada yada, in both boxes. But this Rose Art shade of brown may be a little bit lighter than the Crayola shade of brown. So in order for you to know which one is your machine doing i mean which color it is you have to color with what you have so if you have rose, you have um what did i say rose art right you have rose art i have crayola i color with my crayola crayons i know what my colors are because i've colored with them and i see them out on the paper so when i see that color brown i know hey that's the brown i want to use so i tell my my I know to go to that box and pick pick that crayon to get that same color brown. Whereas I look at your paper where you color with your crayons and I'm like, well, I like her shade of brown. I want to color with her shade of brown. Well, I need to know what you're coloring with. You know, you I don't know if you understand or you're following me, but I need to know what you're using in order to use your colors. But you made your colors work for you just like I made my colors work for me. So when you're working with your sublimation printer, I don't care what anybody else is doing. I don't care what settings they have. I don't care what you got to put it on, blah, blah, blah. The best thing you can do for your sublimation printer is to go online and do a Google search for a color chart. Okay. So let's pull up a color chart so that you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll go color. I'm, I'm even going to put color sample chart. And then let me switch you over so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So I typed in up here, color sample chart and hit enter. So as you see, it pulls up 
all of these different colors, right? So go to images, select images. All right, Google Images is right here under the search bar. And when you pull up images, here are different color charts. All right, so this one here, this is the type color chart that, or actually this is an easy one, sample color chart just for you decals. Or if you wanna get really high tech, you can go for this one over here with all of these different colors on it, like a Pantone chart. You can type in Pantone chart too, if this is the type of color schematics you want but you can do something just as easy just for you decals okay so what you would do is you would grab this design okay so you right click on it and save image as sometimes that works for the most part it works but sometimes it doesn't work and if that's the case you may have to do a screen print but that's technical stuff with your computer i can't help you with that but some kind of way save this all right and then whatever software it is that you're using to print out with your sublimation machine. I don't care what software it is, it doesn't matter. So if you're using Microsoft Publisher, if you're using uh, Photoshop, if you're using um, Adobe Image, what's the name of that other, any software, you Cricut. If you're using Cricut, if you're using Silhouette, doesn't matter. The thing is, use whatever software you're going to be using from now on that you want to use to edit your stuff. Pick that software, get this image, put it in that software, and print it out with your sublimation printer. Whatever settings, it doesn't matter. Print it out, and then press it on a scrap piece of polyester fabric. Find a piece of satin, press it to that one little scrap piece of satin, however big it is, and look at your colors. Look at your colors. So if they print out a little bit off from this, it doesn't have to be exactly what this is. However it prints out, those are your colors. That's how your printer is printing, and that's what you have. Now, if you're not technical and you can't do all that tweaking and trying to figure out how to make it match exactly what's on the screen, okay, well... This is how it will work out for you. This is how I had to make it work at one point. So I have this printed out on a sample piece of fabric. However it printed out, it didn't matter. And now I have a sample of something that I can cross-reference. If I want this shade of blue, I'll get my piece of fabric that I printed with my printer and my software, however the heck it printed out. And I can match that blue to what is on my chart of how I print it out. And then once I pick that and I see what that color is, then I know that's how it's going to turn out. I don't know if that makes sense to you. <laughs> There's a sublimation video I think I've done out there on it. And we can go over it step by step to help it make sense to you. Um, I'm trying to get to this embroidery project. And this goes into sublimation, but that is one way to attack that problem for the time being until you have some time where you can delve into other settings, other software, and try and find something that's going to work the best for you. Um, what I found out with my sublimation was um, that using Microsoft Publisher worked great sometimes, but once I got my settings just right in Photoshop, Photoshop worked better a hundred percent of the time but the colors weren't the same if i printed in photoshop photoshop versus printing in publisher the colors didn't come out the same so when i printed in publisher i had to pull up a completely different chart to match my colors to versus matching my colors to photoshop it's that part of it is a royal pain especially if your settings aren't like sawgrass i'm pretty sure has software that comes with it if i'm not i mean i don't see why they wouldn't but especially as much as that printer costs, there should be software that goes with it. And if that's the case, it's already tuned to the printer. It's already tuned to the printer. But if you're, if you're making your own printer, uh, like I did with the 7710, and I turned, converted it into a sublimation printer, the color is going to be a little bit off. The color is going to be a little bit off. But I was able to work with it because I had a color chart of what my printer would print. Okay. Hopefully that helped and that I didn't mess you up too bad.
I hope not anyway. <laughs> but it's 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 a a simple approach to making something work until you can take the time to learn how to uh, manipulate what you have to get the results you're looking for. Okay. Um, let us say I was going backwards. I hope I didn't forget anyone or anything. It, it needs a window system to run it. Harmony said, did not know that. Harmony says, I do have a detailed receipt for the Melco. If you would like to share that on Facebook, you are willing, you are more than welcome to forward that to anyone who wants to know. All right. So, uh, Pantone colors are different from C. Yes. All of that is for folks who are not technical, for folks who don't have that type of expertise, uh, technical to go into the computer and set their settings and fool with the printer and blah, blah, blah. The easiest thing is just print out a color chart and use it and match your stuff up from there. Um, Dr. Threads got the, hey, Dr. Threads, how are you? Welcome, welcome. She got the Cricut Joy Machine yesterday waiting for the mug press and got the mini press. They have their own space. Congratulations, caller. Woo, yes. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, Diane McCoy, hello. Yvonne Hudson, hello. Paying a bit of money, you can color calibrate your monitor to print the colors that you see. Also, there's a website or something. I was unaware of that. I saw T. Moore says got the singer Surge S O 230. Yes, holler. And Walk by Faith got the It's in the Hooping Station. Yes, queen, yes. <laughs> Congratulations. I thought about bringing that on with us tonight. Um, but did not get to um, do that this evening. And Elizabeth got the So What Pro. Congratulations. So What Pro deserves a ring. It deserves a ring. Because So What Pro is an excellent program. Excellent. Excellent program. I absolutely love it. Um, and we're going to get into So What Pro tonight. I have a question. Can you do multicolor with Cricut? You can. Um, you can do multicolor with Cricut. So let's jump into this particular project. I'm going to pull it up and walk you through what all I'm trying to do with this project tonight. And in doing this project, we are going to have to use um, Sewer Pro in order to accomplish what I want to do. All right. So let's go to one of my absolute favorite design websites. I do have quite a few of them. This one is a top one. Um, and I've done several videos of her projects through the years, but this one is going to be a little bit different. It's all her project, but we're going to take a couple of projects and squish them together. All right. So this is designs by little B. She is an awesome sauce person. She has, um, uh, some totally beautiful designs and I'm gonna blow it up a little bit. So it's easier for, uh, folks to see. And Designs by Little B stuff is super cute. So she has, under her new products, she has this really cute airplane design that she came out with. And here's a zoom in of basically what it entails. It's an airplane showing, you know, it flying in a circle or following a circle path. And I just absolutely love it. It's super cute. Although I have no intentions of flying anywhere anytime soon, but I do love to fly and I had fun the few times I did get to travel prior to COVID, just prior to COVID. So what I decided to do was put this design on something that I wanted and I decided on a zipper pouch, right? Well, she doesn't have this design on a zipper pouch. She has the luggage tag holder. Um, she has a felty. She has keychains. Um, she even has a hand sanitizer. Let's go to the actual what's new tab. Um, I bought all of these. So that's why it's telling me that message, which I absolutely love. Hand sanitizer holder. Look, y'all look at the embroidery machine. That's the 770. Ain't it cute? Embroidery machine, uh, keychain. She even has the multi-needle keychain for the brother. Absolutely love her designs. All right. So here's the airplane. 
and um, she has super cute airplane design. She even has the felty and the lip balm holder. Um, here's an ID holder, all in that airplane design, okay? So definitely when you get an opportunity to check her out, this is the one that I purchased, this airplane um, eyelet and snap tab, but I'm going to focus on this. Hopefully we'll have time for this tonight, this part of it, but here's the um, little eyelet. But check out her website. For everything that you purchase, you get points. And of course your points build up and you can use your points to use for future purchases. This is Designs by Little B. And as you see, $3 is not very much at all to pay for a keychain set or any of her designs. As a matter of fact, let's go back to the hand sanitizer holder and the badge holder. Um, this says five by seven and up only size machine. Um, so she has different sizes, but let's also go to zipper projects. And this is the bag that we'll be working with tonight. The top zip square. It's six dollars for an in the hoop zipper bag. But if you click on it and we scroll down to the description, this says an easy to make zipper pouch for all your goodies. Each bag is a square shape. The size is included for six dollars. You get a four by four, a five by five. A six by six, a seven by seven, and an eight by eight <laughs> zipper pouch. So you're getting one, two, three, four, five different sizes for six dollars. Okay, so this is the design that we'll be working with tonight. Um, hopefully, we'll get it done in time. But here's the zipper pouch. Okay, and I want you to notice this one has um, sewing motif on it on the fabric. But look at the zipper pull. No, well, not the zipper pull. This is the little side clip. But her, she has a little ruler. It's actually true to inch. Um, as a little tag to hang from it. Well, I thought if we put the, the um, airplane monogram on the front of this pouch, which I think would to be totally adorable, put the airplane monogram and then put the little airplane eyelet keychain as the zipper pull on this, I think would end up being totally, totally adorable. So that's the plan of what I wanted to do tonight. We'll see what we can get accomplished, right? So instead of having, um, instead of having sewing a uh, thread and scissors and pins and stuff fabric, we're just doing this plain yellow. It's a little bit thicker of a canvas fabric. And then for the lining, I'm just going for this pretty gray with the writing on it, uh, which I thought was really cute. And I felt like the two colors would marry very well. And then I also have a um, little tassel, hopefully to hang from it. So we're going to go for the five by five pouch. Um, and then I have the uh, clip tab keychain part. I have the ribbon for this to hang from right here. Um, and then hopefully, as I mentioned, we can get the airplane done and the airplane will be the zipper pull uh, to go on the zipper. So that's the goal for what we have tonight. Now, whether or not we get through all of that, we'll see. But that's what we're working towards. And uh, let's see what we actually can do. But definitely uh, check out Designs by Little B. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the... Um, in the description below and put designs by little b even though i'm pretty sure she's in un, in my description anyway but just in case it's in our description all right so let's go ahead um and let me make sure hey Alyssa, welcome welcome always a pleasure to have you here and Jeanette is visiting with me. I'm not sure. Alyssa, I got just got a Meistergram 15 needle to add to her collection. It's her sixth multi-needle 
machine. Congratulations, Alyssa, for six babies. Your sixth baby. That's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> yes, congratulations. Congratulations. Multi needle number six. That is awesome sauce. That is actually very, very awesome sauce. So let us go ahead and get switched our camera over to our uh, embroidery machine. And I'm going to make an adjustment real quick on the camera for it. I'm going to tilt it down a little bit and we'll tilt it back up when it is time to actually start the embroidery. Uh, but here is our bobbin. We're going to put a new bobbin in here so that we can um, make sure we don't have any interruptions with our project. But for now, I'm going to set it up there. Again, here's the tassel that I said I wanted to use. Here's the lining, lining fabric. And here is our, it's a lightweight canvas, uh, yellow fabric. You're welcome, Alyssa. Um, a lightweight yellow fabric. And uh, who's not feeling well? Linda, I hope you feel better. Um, ooh, I hope you feel better because Lord knows I know how it is to be sick. Uh, so here we have our yellow fabric. And then here's the uh, keychain thingy that we won't be needing anytime soon. Here's our ribbon that we will be using uh, as a tab on the side of the uh, zipper pouch. Now, for me, I wanted to kind of sort of match my fabric kind of close as possible. This kind of looks blue from the camera angle, um, but I'm going to go with a gray to do the embroidery on the surface of the um, pouch. And I'm pretty sure that our stabilizer needs to be a tear away. I'm going to confirm that. And then of course we have our embroidery hoop that we're going to be putting the stabilizer on, which is why I was mentioning that I wanted to get the hooping station so that uh, we can, no, that's too dark, so that we can match our hooping um, stabilizer to our hoop and marry it properly. All right, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to see if I can turn this a little bit so that we can try and get this stabilizer hooped and get us started. Because, of course, the stabilizer is the first and most important part of all of it. Because without your stabilizer being hooped properly, then... What really are you doing with your embroidery project? All right, so let's grab this. And because I don't have scissors on me, not bigger pair of scissors, I'm just going to, I'm going to use my creasing with my fingernails, sliding it across, and I'm going to tear it since this is tear away. And try and get a clean tear as clean as possible nice all right so let's put that off to the side and now we'll hoop our stabilizer so before i hoop this i want to be sure that it's not going to be too loose all right so this is fitting in pretty tight okay this is fitting in pretty tight. So I'm going to loosen it a smidge. I'm going to pop the inner ring out first, and then I'm going to loosen it. And now I'm going to pop it back in and make sure it's not super tight. Okay, so that's a lot looser than what it was. And now let's lay <clears throat> our stabilizer on top. And again, as I mentioned, most of your in the hoop projects, uh, you use tear away with the project. Most of your in the hoop projects use tear away. Some of them you can use sticky stabilizer, but most of them use a tear away. So this was a little big um, for my hoop, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. 
um, with this specific project. So I'm going to go ahead also and put in my bobbin because we definitely need to do that in order to get us going. Sorry, I'm trying to get it turned where we can see. And like I mentioned, this is Faith. She's new here. Did we ring the bell? We didn't ring the bell for Faith. Oh my gosh. How downright shameful. And here's her curb cover. So let's put her bobbin in. And we're going to flip up her helmet and use her. There we go. Finally. Jeez Louise. I'm trying to get this camera to cooperate. All right. There we go. So let's get her lid lifted so that we can get her threaded. And before we get her threaded, we are going to... Oh, you know what? I forgot to show y'all the zipper. We'll pick out a zipper here in a sec. And we're going to ring the bell for uh, Faith because Faith is joining us. As I mentioned, she's new and she's been adopted into the Baby's Booty family. Woo! Yas! Holler! Congratulations, Faith! <laughs> Welcome, Faith. Welcome. And you know what? I don't even have the uh, design loaded into her. So that just goes to show this is all being done spur of the momento. Okay, so we are going to get her threaded. As I mentioned, again, this is her very first time coming here with us. So I've never threaded her. And most of your machines thread the same way. We just definitely want to look at our um, guides and make sure that we put them and follow all of the guides, especially this one. A lot of people forget this needle bar right here. There's a number six at the very top of this needle where the little turn handle comes out where you loosen it to get the needle out this bar right in front of that that thread really needs to go back behind that as well okay so we've got that threaded and now we swing it over into the automatic needle threader and then needle threader didn't want to cooperate with me right now but that's okay that's something i should have tried out let's see here we go we're gonna do this the granny way the old-fashioned way and we're gonna thread her manually only because i don't want to keep trying when i know i thread fairly easily as well oh it came out from behind that bar so let's put that back behind that needle bar boom there we go all right so she's threaded and now Faith has a sister. Her name is Faith Too Sweet. Do you use tearaway or cutaway for patches? Um, I normally use a uh, material called Badge Master, and Badge Master is technically a wash away. It's not a tearaway nor a cutaway. All right. Normally I would leave that up. I won't pull that down. And now, how do I put this design on here? Let me see if she has a dooflachi she does have a usb connection that's what's up faith my girl so i'm gonna go grab my usb so that we can make it easier on us before i run out of too much time i didn't realize we were going on 10 30 y'all oh we're gonna have to work our buns off to get this done all right so here is our um, USB, and I'm going to try. Oh, you know what? That's what I can do. And put this in. I needed to get a uh, empty slot for my USB because all my USB thingies are taken up. And we are going to, you know what, y'all? Oh, my goodness. I'm sitting here focusing on faith. Hold on. That's not going to work. We can't focus on faith yet. Oh, I should have started this earlier. All right. Let's get this switch back over. 
I should have started this earlier because I forgot we've got the merge designs. We haven't even done that part yet. So I'm going to pull up the design and then I'm going to switch you all over to Sew It Pro. So let me get Sew It Pro pulled up. Actually, let's move this to here. And then I'm going to <clears throat> get choked. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> so what pro? All right. Let me. Oh, that one. Yas. All right. Here's the what pro. <clears throat> now I'm going to open up the design. And here it is. Here's the five by five. <clears throat> and in order to customize your own design, you have to know where at what point in the <clears throat> order of the pouch where you need to add the design. I don't got choked, y'all. Sorry about that. So our first um, color stop is always a placement stitch to show where to lay the fabric. So that's step one. Step two is going to be where to lay the zipper, which we need to go through my box of zippers and find a zipper. Then we have step three, which is going to tack the zipper down and step four <clears throat> is the, let's make sure, is probably to tack down the um, fabric that goes below the zipper. Most likely this is your lining, not your lining, but your outside fabric. And I'm going to double check the instructions just to be sure. <clears throat> Five is going to be where you would attach your ribbon. Six, oh, that's going to, five is going to show you where to put the ribbon. Six is going to tack it down. Seven is going to stitch the fabric in place, so on and so forth. And that's the end of the thing. This actually may not be one with a lining. Let me look at it just to be sure of what I have. And I do like to check my instructions. I'm not above instructions. I don't have all these pouches memorized. I'm here to tell you. So definitely, whenever you go through and you purchase a design, like for instance, um, here is the files for the design. <clears throat> These are all the files that came with that 4x4 pouch. If you scroll down until you see the PDF, it comes with instructions. Okay, so don't ever be ashamed or feel bad about reading the instructions. At one point, I would print them out and lay them out on the table to follow along and mark off steps as I cross them. But at this point, I've at least been able to do um, my designs and get used to it. So here's the five by five bag. Actually, it does say fabric for the outer and fabric for the lining. Okay, so this is a line bag. And here we have hoop the stabilizer and it will stitch the placement stitch. Then the next one is place, take your zipper and place it between the next stitch. Oh no, it goes at the top. So we're gonna put the zipper <clears throat> right in this rectangle. And then the next step, st stitch step that I thought was to show us where to put the zipper is actually going to tack the zipper down, okay? So we need to put our zipper in place. Then our next um, step is going to be putting our lining in place. All right. And we're going to follow all of these steps as we go through them. Then we're going to put the front fabric in place. And then we're going to tack the pieces down. And then we will flip our stuff over so that we can get our fabric in place. Um, and then right here, step after this step six 
Stitch anything you've added as personalization. The bottom lining should still be out of the way underneath the hoop, okay? So this is where we're going to actually add our um, personalization, our monogram with the airplane, okay? So that's after step, after it stitches that square, the top stitching, then we're going to add our airplane, okay? So in order to add the airplane, monogram i've already downloaded it and we're going to go with let's see let me take a look at this real quick here is the monogram frame and i'm going to go with the four by four one i think we'll do the four by four frame we'll do a small one I don't think that's the one I wanted to do. Let me check and see. No, that's not the one I wanted to do. So I'm going to unzip this folder. And then pick the one I wanted. Even though it looks like it's going to take me longer. Okay, so here are... Let's show you a picture. Hopefully this has a picture on it. Okay, so here is the simple monogram frame that I want. I don't want the badge, I just want this design, okay? So in order to get, to get just this design, we're gonna have to open this design in Sew It Pro as well. So let's go back to Sew It Pro, and I'm going to normally, when I'm bringing in a design, I would tell you to merge, okay? But in this instance, I just want to open a new file because my pouch is here, and I want that frame to go from a different file into this one. So I'm going to open a new file. And it's the badge folder that I just opened up. And the cool thing about Sew Up Pro, doesn't matter what your file extension is, it'll open every last one of these. So I'm just going to grab one. I don't even know what the, what the, this is a VIP file. I don't know what machine VIP reads, but it doesn't matter because Sew Up Pro reads it. And we're going to open it. All right, so... As you see, this tab, the second tab is my pouch that I'm going to put this monogram frame on. And then the second tab is the actual badge. I don't want the badge. So what I'm going to do is start deleting thread stops. So here's the first one, stop number one. I'm going to right click and do delete thread because I don't want it. This is the plane. This is the frame. I want this. So this silver step I'm keeping. Black is the plane. I want it, so I'm keeping that. The light blue has nothing to do with that frame. I don't want it. Right-click, delete thread. Royal purple is the badge outline. I don't want it. Right-click, delete that. This that's left is what I want, okay? So what I'm going to do is just draw, click, and drag a square around both of them. And then I'm going to edit, and I'm going to copy and then I'm going to come over to this pouch and I'm going to edit and I'm going to hit paste. Now what that has done is it put these two 10 and 11 it added step it, it went to step number nine but we added step 10 and 11 because that's the frame that I want on my design and I'm actually going to move it down so let's drag this down a little bit and put it more towards the center of the bottom part of that bag. All right, so now that I have that, remember she said to personalize after it stitches that square, okay? So the next step is the personalization. So let's go ahead and find that square. So that's, that's the main step, that's the zipper, that's the flip in the fabric. Here's the square, step number four, color stop number four. So we're gonna grab 10, and I'm gonna drag it up. Oh, sorry, we gotta hold down shift key. 10 and drag it up to the five because I want four, five, and now I want this black plane to be step number six. So I'm, I selected the black, I'm holding down the shift and I'm gonna drag it up to the six, okay? So now four is gonna stitch, now five is gonna stitch, now six is gonna stitch. And it's going to personalize that pouch then until we do our next step for now 
is going to be the rest of the pouch like it's supposed to be. But now it's going to have my airplane monogram frame right there on the front of the pouch. Okay. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so we have the monogram frame. Now we just need the monogram letters. We don't have the letters. Okay. So I'm going to go back out to my folder and make sure that I unzipped which it doesn't look like I did. Nope. So here is the zipped file with my monogram letters in it. So I'm going to unzip this. All right. And now that I've unzipped it, I'm pretty sure that this is a four by four. I'm sorry, not about four by four, one inch circle. Let me look and see. Nope. It's a 2.2 .2 by 2.2 .2 circle. So I can use the two inch monogram letters. So this uh, monogram that I purchased is called the mini circle outline monogram. It comes with the one inch and the two inch. So I'm going to use the two inch uh, size letters for my monogram. Okay. So it's still unzipping. It just finished. And here it opened up, but I don't want to look at it right here. I want to look at it in So What Pro. So I'm going to go back to So What Pro. And now that we have our um, design frame here, now I want to merge my letters in. All right. And it's going to merge my letters in at the end. That's okay because I just showed you how to move them where they need to be. The letters need to stitch after my plain stitches. So let's go to file and I'm going to go to merge and I'm going to go to my uh, monogram letters, two inch, doesn't matter which brand you pick because again, this is uh, so what pro and it will read them all. And my right letter, let me mentally go through this last name, first name, middle name. So the, the, far left letter will be an E. So this is the letter A. This is the left letter A. This is the right letter A. And this is the center letter A. So you see how her letters are listed. But I need the letter E. So let's go scroll down. Here's C. Here's D. Here's E. The left letter E. I want that. So I'm going to hit open. And here we got it. And I'm going to, oh my gosh, that just looked all kind of crazy. There we go. Now let's move this E in place. Bump it up just a smidge. And now I need a letter L. So I'm going to merge. Now I'm doing this one at a time only because it's for me right now, it's quicker. But you can, once you merge one letter in, I can do info icon and pull up. Uh, let's show you. So now that I open that one, I should be able to get the rest of them by doing info icon view, which it did. So here's all the rest of the letters. Um, so now I can just click this. Remember, I need a letter L in the middle. So here's the left, the right, and here's the middle one. So there's the L. Just click it at one time. We'll bring it in. And then I need the letter B for the right. So click it one time and that brings it in. And I'm actually going to make sure that when I, um, and now we're done with info icon view, I'm going to close it out. And I'm going to make sure that this stitches first, then my plane will stitch. And the reason why is because I want my plane wing to go over the top of this letter B. All right. So let's take our first letter, there's the letter and there's the outline. You can do the outline if you want to. Um, and for sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave it, but uh, we may run out of time to do it. So remember our monogram is five and six. Well, that's going to change because I want my letters to stitch first. So let's hold down shift. I'm going to grab the first letter E thing. I'm going to drag it to number five. So now my letter E is number five. 
And then there's the outline to my letter E. So let's move that to the six because I want that to be step six. My letter L, I want it to be step seven. So I'm gonna hold down shift, drag it to seven. The outline, I want that to be step eight. So I'm gonna drag that up to step eight. The B, I want that to be step nine. So I'm gonna drag this up to step nine. The outline for the letter V, I want to be step 10. So I'm gonna select it, hold down shift, drag it up to 10. And there, now I have my square that's gonna hold down that front fabric. And now it's gonna stitch my monogram in, ste in steps. And then now my outline for the plane is gonna stitch. And now my plane is gonna stitch. So now the plane wing will be over the top of the letter B. And after the wing, the plane stitches, then we'll finish the pouch. And that's how you can customize your own pouch, merging all these different designs into So What Pro and make this what you want it to be. Because she doesn't sell the pouch with the plain monogram with my name on it, with a top zipper. So I'm using all of her designs, which she's perfectly okay with, and putting my monogram on it for a pouch for me. So now that we have it the way we want, we have all of our steps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save as, and I'm going to put my name after this, and then I'm going to save it. All right, I'm going to leave this pulled up on my computer so that I can make sure everything stitches out in the colors that I want it to. As a matter of fact, I may end up changing the colors of my letters so that the plane and the circle around it can be, well, no, maybe I'll just make the plane black and then everything else, the letters and the circle around it is going to be gray, just for simplicity's sake. So now I need to go back to the folder where I saved my pouch, top zip square, five by five Eve pouch, and I'm going to drag it to my USB that's not plugged in yet. So let's plug that in. So we can get that design on here and put it over on the machine. Now I can't see the chat while I'm going through this. So if you have any questions, uh, I apologize. I can't get to it right now. Whoops. This was a project that I had. And now let's go back to desktop. And then here's my file. I'm going to select it and drag it to E drive. So there now it is with my initials and everything in on my USB drive now. Okay. So now that that's there, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And now I'm going to load this into the embroidery machine, which is what I was supposed to do earlier, but it wasn't already done. We're not going to be able to get to the small airplane um, like I wanted to, to put the little floaty tab on, but hopefully we'll be able to get that done later and put it on. Uh, here it is. Here's the picture I was looking for and attach this to the zipper. So hopefully we'll get to do that another time or later and post it on um, Facebook so that you guys can see it. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to get you switched over to the um, embroidery machine and we're going to go ahead and put this in the embroidery machine so that you can see the process as it unfolds, okay? So you remember the first step is the placement stitch. Okay, so let's get the design pulled up. And there's our file. And fortunately, come on, uh, let me make sure this is gonna work. It may not take a, a DST, y'all. I may have to save it as a, um, yeah, it ain't wanting to take that. Hold on, let me get this saved again, but save it as a PS because that could be what is making it beep, beep, beep at me. Because as you saw, it did pull up the file, but 
it didn't save it like it wanted to. So I'm going to delete this and then go back into So What Pro. And instead of saving it as a DST, I'm going to save it as a PES. Um, boom. All right, so I saved it as a PES. And I'm going to drag it over as soon as I find it. Oh, it's in the folder. I didn't put it on my desktop. That's why I can't see it. Okay. All right, now it's on there. All right. Can't be right if it don't act up at least one time. All right, Faith. Hopefully you'll like to eat this. Look, it even showed a picture of it. So, yas, queen, yas. That's what's up, Faith. That's what's up. So, it's on there now. So, let's go ahead and see if we can't get her going. She has her fresh bobbin. She has her tearaway not even hooked up. Y'all, look. I would have been messing up already. So, let's latch this puppy on. Now, Faith, we can let you go. See, I was about to mess you up, girl. Let's see what she does. She's Uh-oh. She said her safety device is acting up. So what's going on with Faith? We might not be able to get this done today. Hold on. That would be somewhere below. So let us see how she's acting. Hold on. Because the good thing is, at least, even if we can't get it stitched out tonight, because I swear I'm running on 45 minutes. Even if we can't get it stitched out tonight, my other thing was showing you how to merge designs with Sewer Pro. So, uh-oh, let's, well, let's see if she'll press the what version. Nope, she don't want to raise the needle. So, we're going to have to work with her just like this. There you go. All right. So, here is her bobbin case. Have you ever seen a bobbin case to a 5x7 or a 4x4 um, four four embroidery machine? This is a bobbin case. Um, I will take a minute to point something out that I've been trying to explain to people. If you ever get to embroidering and your embroidery, okay, so say for instance, you've been embroidering just fine. Then you work on a project and you work on something and it's thick or something messes up and you break a needle, right? Then you change the needle, you put everything back in place and you go to embroider again. And after that, everything that you embroider, you keep getting bird nest and you keep having issues it won't stitch out you change your needle you got a new needle change fabric change stabilizer but you just keep getting the bird nesting this could be the culprit so when you break a needle a lot of times the needle breaks because it bends that's what breaks your needle so when that needle flexes because it was trying to stitch something heavy duty or something that shifted wrong or whatever the case may be either way that needle got binded and it wouldn't stitch properly so when it shifted it would have hit the side of this thing somewhere it would have hit probably somewhere in that peak or somewhere down here one of mine was hit right down here and it causes a burr on the underside so what happens is as this spins to try and catch the thread the need the thread gets caught on the snag of the burr of the back side of where the needle punctured through this thing so all you have to do is order another one of these these are like what five bucks maybe and that'll solve the problem and a lot of folks don't know that um and they end up getting a whole new derm machine and going to the dealership and the dealership is like oh you need to uh get a new machine and blah 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 blah, and it ain't even all when all you gotta do is get this piece so faith will is uh locked up and i'm not sure why and i need to take 
this off. So we about to do surgery on camera, y'all. Let me grab my surgical tool. And I am not one to be, I don't know if you can hear me or not. I think you can, because you're supposed to be in my ear. But I am not one to be ashamed of opening up stuff. It's something I love to do. I've always loved working on things, even as a child with my grandfather. So this doesn't, that's tightening. I don't want to tighten, I want to loosen. So for those of you who are squeamish about working on things, look away. There's one, and then a, uh, a sewing machine tech taught me how to take stuff off and work on it. Faith is okay, girl. We doing surgery on you in front of folks on camera, but we'll be careful, I promise. So whenever your safety device engages, it's because something in here is getting caught. So the needle, um, well, actually it could be up here as well, but a lot of times it's down here because this is directly connected to the up and down mechanism. So if this gets locked in place, the up and down won't work, but this can also be something caught up here as well. But we're gonna take one step at a time and I open her all the way up so that I can see if there's something down here that could be um, catching it or whatever, um, because it could be thread, it could be a broken needle, um, it could be all kind of stuff that would cause this to lock up, but it's locked up right now. So we could add a couple of drops of oil down in here, because that looks like it needs may need oil so we'll add a little bit of oil to that while i get myself together to take the other cover off the top i didn't know we was gonna do surgery on camera tonight so that's pretty cool i think so i have an oil pen and all i'm doing All I've done is put a drop or two down in this channel right here because this is, see how it's turning? Can you see that? It's turning around this. So if that's not lubricated properly, then it'll lock up. So that needs to be lubricated. This also needs to be cleaned regularly as well because this catches lint and dust and dirt. And as you see, there's, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's lint there. That's very common. That's going to happen with all of these machines. So we're going to let that sit for a minute while I move to step two after putting the lid back on that so that it doesn't spill. And step two is this, this cover here. And there's a screw back here in the back that will remove this cover. This machine, thus far, everything looks almost exactly like it does in the 4x4 machine. You don't have to take that screw all the way out that's back here. You just have to loosen it and then pull that right off. Okay, slide it off. And then up here is where the up and down bar goes to push the needle up and down. So what we're going to do is look right in here and see if there's anything that could be stopping it right in here from going up and down as well. This in a machine would need to be lubricated as well, all right, um, at some point. And unfortunately, you have bars and rods and springs and screws, and there's so much going on up here that this part of it, I tend to not fool with too much because usually the issue is down here in this area 
more so than it is up here. But you have to take the time and look and see and try and figure it out as you go because it doesn't take much for anything to go awry with these machines. Unfortunately, that's just how they work. So for me, whenever I have an issue with a machine, no matter what it is, I do process of elimination. Um, people are like, this is going wrong with my machine, my machine and I need to know why. Why is my machine doing this? Well, okay, well, take a minute and do process of elimination. Unfortunately, this is my first time operating this machine. So I don't have a history to go off of. But if you have a history and your machine was working fine until, what was the thing that made it stop working? Did you just change the needle and now it won't work? Did you, um, I don't know, did you just use a new thread and now all of a sudden it's shredding and it's not working like it's supposed to. You change threads. The thread I used before worked great. Now this thread doesn't. It could be the thread might be a little bit bigger. And so it's throwing the tension off on the machine. There's a whole list of stuff that could cause um, this to not want to move. But I'm looking at, there am I? I'm sorry, I'm putting boob all in the camera. I apologize, let me go on this side. Because this here is not wanting to turn. And I don't want to force it without knowing what's stopping it. And you definitely don't want to necessarily force it because that's a quick way to break something. Let me move this out because I think, yep, yeah, it still works without that USB in there. And I'm still putting boob in the camera. I apologize. All right. Nope, she ain't going to turn. She's turning more down here than she's moving up here. So I'm wondering, sure enough, if it's... But that's not making much of a difference either. All right, y'all. I am doing process of elimination and talking, and I ain't looked at no kind of chat. Uh, let me pull that up so that I can see what the heck I'm doing and who might be saying something. Um, make sure. Oh, hey, Bickup, Miss Bickup, how are you? I took my PEA Hunter down to the guts. Plastic rocker on the inside broke. Now to try to find the part. Only place I found it was unavailable. Oh, yes. Is there more than one so what pro software? If so, how do I know which to get? Um, Take your time, Eve. I need this. And then you write my Okay. I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. Sorry. I wanted to check that. Okay. So, I could start taking this stuff apart. I'm not going to do that on camera. Because <laughs> I got to lay stuff out and label stuff. But from what I see, Oh, see, that did move the handle a little bit. So it could be something down there. Let's see, this is here. It's moving. But something is stopping this from turning. And I don't know what it is. Oh, the motor ain't locked up. I just thought of it. Hold on, let's see. Does this work? That didn't work. It vibrated there. That's what's got me concerned. So, I wonder if I could just take this off and go from there. Okay. Because I don't see anything. Where's my phone? I need lights. I don't see anything under there that would indicate that there's a fabric or or thread or anything under there 
So, interesting. What I may do, let me go ahead and take this thing all the way apart, y'all. Who want to see a naked embroidery machine? <laughs> I had to post pictures of it, though. Because there is no way, whenever I work on stuff like this, I have to be able to be free to use my own fixing on stuff language. It's not bad language, but I just need to have my own dialogue when working on things like this. So to be on the safe side, I'm not going to subject y'all to that, but I am going to work on it. And I'm going to have to work on this in not after 11 o'clock time. So this may be a project I use for tomorrow. So at any rate, I apologize. When you attempt to turn, it won't turn forward or backward. No. It will not turn forward or backward. So it's locked up. I'm not sure where it's locked up yet. Because I need a flashlight, more light, and I need to take the cover the top part off to look down where the wheel, the turn wheel connects and follow that whole path from the wheel all the way to the up and down. But I think it's down at the bottom personally. I don't know why I'm thinking I'm, I'm more than positive it's down at the bottom is where the issue is. So did you see it so before you got it? No, I didn't. But like I said, she was adopted, so it's not an issue whatsoever. We just need to see what is making her not feel well and fix it. Because it's really hard to tear up a sewing machine. I don't care what sewing machine it is. It's really hard to tear up a sewing machine. Um, and usually as... Who was it? Yeah. Well, Sheila Cushenberry. As Sheila Cushenberry pointed out, it could just be a plastic rocker or a plastic wheel of some sort that's just not making it work and sewing machines part plus um sewing machine parts.com either one a lot of them carry the parts to these machines um pretty inexpensively you just have to have the know-how and the drive to be able to take it apart figure out what the issue is and put it back together so yeah that's how that goes. Can't remember what was causing it. Yeah, I mean, I've had the safety mechanism act up on my 4x4 before, but it was thread wrapped around the bobbin case down at the bottom. And that was my bad because I knew I had messed up. So at any rate, y'all, I tried to do a pouch. We're going to see about getting this pouch done one way or the other because it was super cute. It was really cute. But so at Pro, for a fraction of the price you're able to get a powerful powerhouse software program that will allow you to customize anything that's out there. If you follow the steps and just find the two, three designs that you want and put them together, you can make it happen. Now, can you take a picture and turn it into embroidery with So What Pro? No, you cannot. That's not what So What Pro is for. So What Pro has a, uh, the company that made So What Pro, makes a program called So Art. Now, So Art is a digitizing program, and that program, you take a picture and turn it into embroidery stitches. But with So Art, you take what's already out there, you shrink it, enlarge it, you customize it, you cut it apart, you remove pieces, like you saw me delete stitches. I mean, there is very little editing that you cannot do with So What Pro. I absolutely love So What Pro for $65. Loved it so much, I called them and begged them to let me be able to be a authorized reseller, and they were willing. So I sell uh, So What Pro on my website, thebabiesbooty.com. So if you're interested, you can go there and make a purchase. Um, and it's just, it's a awfully awesome sauce program. You can't go wrong with So What Pro. I absolutely love it. Now, if you have a Macintosh, a little bit different because you got to use an emulator to use it. But otherwise, I love So What Pro. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, Alyssa just took apart my new 15 needle to adjust needle number 11. The timing was out. 
found a video online and tackled it. The industrial machines, they do teach you how to work on those machines. The brother machines, they don't want you working on them. So what I just did, if I had bought this brand new, I would have avoided the warranty just that quick. Um, but it's not under warranty, so I know I can take it apart. Um, and even if it was under warranty, I ain't going to tell them I took it apart. But I know how to fix them for the most part. Um, it's not super difficult. And even if I can't fix it, I have a repair person, my go-to. I have a video of him from years back working on some of my equipment. Um, he's awesome. He came here, geez, how long ago has it been now? Four months now? He came and worked on some old uh, sewing machines for me to get them back up and running and timed and stuff. So I absolutely know he can fix this for me as well. So uh, yes, I can share the link to So What Pro. I definitely can. But meanwhile, you guys, it's after 11 o'clock. And you know, I don't like keeping y'all late like this. I don't even like to be up too much later than this myself, especially when it is dealing with work. Because <laughs> after 11 o'clock, it's my time. And I like to chill out and have some fun. And I've gotten into... Um, I found me something new that I like to do for myself. So and it has nothing to do with embroidery at all. There's the link to Sew Up Pro. Um, now with Sew Up Pro, if you purchase it now, I'm up. I can send the registration code, generate the registration code rather and have it sent from their website. If I'm driving, if I'm asleep, if I'm not paying attention to my email, it may take me a minute or a little bit to get the code to you. So please keep that in mind. If you do purchase Sew Up Pro, I have to be available to generate the code to you. So if you don't get it within, I'll say 24 hours, shoot me an email. Hey, I don't have this code yet and I'll get it right to you. But usually I'm paying attention to my email. I even have an alert built into it. When it works properly, it will alert me and I'll go ahead and send the code. All right, unless I'm asleep. So unplugging it for a bit, something probably tripped and blah, blah, I will definitely try Mars. The thing is, I just plugged it up. I hadn't had it on at all. That was my first time turning it on. Uh, will it turn with the machine off? I like that. We'll look at that as well. Yep, I did. I just looked under the faceplate and I didn't see anything at all under there. So that's what I'm going to uh, look into a little bit closer. Closer, closer. Sheila Cushionberry, it was, I didn't test drive at first. I just said, hey, sure, send it. I'd be more than happy to, to take her and love on her. And I, I, we got it. So that, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, so as soon as we find out what's making her sick, we gonna get her back where she can tick. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, thank you so very much for joining me this evening, especially for the Solar Pro tutorial. That's pretty much what, what we boiled down to. That was a lot of fun. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all around the group this week. Uh, so if I'm able to get this zipper pouch done, we'll definitely post a picture. Um, our hoop group captains, please be on the lookout for your email coming this week to let you know what's going on uh, for our project this coming weekend. All right, so Sunday, next Sunday, we should have our, Lord willing, we should have our captains group and do a project together on Sunday for our hoop group captain. So thank you all for joining me this evening. Um, it was a broken needle down inside, Diane. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't take much to get a machine to not act right. I promise it's just, it's probably something very simple that's being overlooked and I'll have to look down in there and figure it out and then get it done. So, <laughs> uh, and Allison, if I have to call him, you best believe he has his number speed out in my phone. So if I have to call him, I definitely will. He's awesome. He's an awesome repair man. So thank you guys. I appreciate y'all joining me and I look forward to catching back up with you later this week. If I have an opportunity, we may go live on Facebook while I work on it. Who knows? If once I get all these plates off and see what's going on, we'll show y'all what the guts look like and we can go from there and see what we can't figure out. And if it ends up where I have to call him to come and look at it, then he doesn't mind me recording either. So we can probably go live and let y'all see that process as well. I'm hoping we don't have to call him, though. I would prefer to fix it myself. But at any rate... 
Thank you all so very much. I thoroughly appreciate you spending your evening with me. And until the next time we see you, we hope you have happy embroidering. Congratulations to all the folks with their new babies out there. And again, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thanks and have a great night. Bye.